July 2nd, 1987, the body of respected Bonanno family associate Anthony Tony Cole Colangelo is found by a driver relieving himself at the side of the Sprain Brook Parkway in Yonkers, near the Jackson Avenue turnoff. The cause of death? Four bullets to the neck and skull. The authorities would later believe that the primary suspect in the killing was the then 27-year-old Vincent Basciano, the future acting boss of the Bonanno crime family. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shores, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organised crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to take a quick look at the 1987 murder of Bonanno family associate Anthony Tony Coles Colangelo and the involvement of Vincent Vinny Gorgeous Basciano. On the 16th of November 1980, powerful Sicilian mafioso Giuseppe Bono married his bride Antonina Albino in St. Patrick's Cathedral in Manhattan. But it was the pictures at the wedding reception at the Pierre Hotel that the FBI found most intriguing. The photos showed a who's who of Bonanno members, including their Montreal faction, featuring Cesare Bonventura, Santo Giordano, George from Canada Shasha, Vito Rizzuto, Frank Lino, Philip Philly Lucky Giacconi, Anthony Bruno Indelicato, and Dominic Big Trin Trinchera. But it took the feds a while to identify the young man stood next to Captain Phil Giacconi and behind Dominic Trinchera, a 21-year-old Vincent Basciano. Vincent Basciano started his life in Yonkers, and whilst a teen, he helped a young boy who was being bullied. This boy was the nephew of Dominic Trinchera, a banana mobster whose star was on the rise. Trinchera took a liking to the young Basciano, who soon found himself as Big Trin's driver and constant companion. Hence his presence in the Pierre Hotel wedding photos. After his early mentor Big Trin was murdered in the famous Three Captains hit in 1981, Basciano hitched his wagon to Bonanno family associate Anthony Colangelo. Tony Cole Colangelo was an old friend of Chinchera's and he allegedly took on some of Big Trin's gambling operations after his killing. Like most mobsters, Colangelo had his fingers in many pies and in 1973 he'd been sentenced to 10 years for conspiracy to supply a cocaine ring. Anyway, once released, and after inheriting his old dead friend Trincara's gambling operations, Tony Cole took the young Basciano under his wing. Tony Cole liked what he saw in Vinnie Gorgeous, especially his management capabilities, and put the young gangster in charge of a few of his struggling number stores around Bedford and Montgomery Streets in Brooklyn. Basciano soon turned the troubled number stores around, and they soon became some of Colangelo's most profitable locations. The impressed Tony Cole then handed over the full running of his gambling business to Basciano and his friend Anthony Donato. Colangelo had two motivations for this. Allegedly, he was losing interest in bookmaking, and also he was about to go to prison again for a drug-related conviction, and he wanted his businesses in capable hands. It was arranged that Tony Cole's share of the gambling proceeds would go to his longtime girlfriend Anna Carincho whilst Colangelo was inside. This usually came to around two to seven thousand dollars per week. Basciano's success allowed him to invest in legitimate business, and in 1983 he opened B and V Video, a movie rental shop in the Bronx. Whilst Tony Cole Colangelo was away in prison, it appears that Basciano started to align himself with Patrick Patty from the Bronx Di Filippo, a made man in the Bonanno family. In 1985, Basciano. Di Filippo and Anthony Donato were arrested for the attempted murder of Bronx-based numbers clerk David Nunes. Nunes was carrying around $15,000 when he was shot in the right shoulder, chin and chest with another bullet grazing his head and another going through the window of the cab that Nunes had just stepped out from. Witnesses recalled hearing the gunman ask Nunes for some money prior to the shooting. Despite being hit several times, Nunes pulled his own gun and returned fire, the shooter escaping by jumping through the window of a blue Chevrolet Impala which sped away. Ten minutes later, the police stopped a car matching that description. One of the passengers, later identified as Basciano, 
made a run from the vehicle, holding a fully loaded 38 caliber revolver. Inside the car, the police found Patrick De Filippo behind the wheel and Anthony Donato in the back seat, along with ski masks and another gun with spent shells. All three men were arrested. Despite them wearing ski masks, David Nunes was able to identify all three of his assailants from photos that were shown to him. A while later, and unsurprisingly, Nunes recanted his identification of Bastiano and the two others, stating that he was actually in fact shot by a short man with a moustache. And despite the circumstantial evidence linking the three men to the attack, forensics couldn't match the guns found with the one involved in the shooting. The charges against all three were dropped. Bastiano, however, was charged with possession of a loaded gun at the time of his arrest. He would eventually plead guilty to this in June 1987 and was sentenced to a year inside. Anthony Tony Cole Colangelo came out of prison in April 1987 and had been happy at how his girlfriend had been financially looked after by Bastiano. Colangelo then heard a rumour from a friend that people had been stealing her from him whilst he'd been inside. Tony Cole's girlfriend Anna Carincho remembers that on May the 23rd, Tony Cole told her that he had some business to attend to involving some kind of trouble, but that she shouldn't worry because he had the kids with him. Colangelo's son would later say that he thought the kids referred to Bastiano and Donato. Colangelo told his wife that he'd be back for dinner, but that was the last time she saw him alive. Nearly two months later, Anthony Colangelo's body was found by a driver half a mile north of the Jackson Avenue turnoff. It was wrapped in large black bags and which had been tied in several places. Inside the bags, Colangelo's body was in a fetal position, decomposing and maggot infested. Investigators into the murder linked Bastiano and Donato to Colangelo through their business relationships with him, but both denied any knowledge of knowing what had happened to their friend. No one was ever charged with Anthony Colangelo's killing, but after his death, Vincent Bastiano assumed control of all of his gambling operations. Three years later, in 1990, Bastiano now owned a blimpy restaurant in the Bronx. Bastiano was making a sandwich for an off-duty police officer when a bookie came in who didn't have the money that he owed Vinnie Gorgeous. The officer recalled hearing Bastiano say to the bookie, We'll take care of you the way we took care of the old man from Pleasant Avenue. You'll find your ass in the woods in Greenberg. At this point in his mob career, Vincent Vinnie Gorgeous Bastiano's star was on the rise. He was 30, a good earner and not afraid to get his hands dirty. He had managed to avoid any serious convictions and his Cosa Nostra future looked bright. The betrayals from his boss Joe Messino and from his protege Dominic Cicchelli lay just 15 years down the line and would result in Vinnie Gorgeous being sentenced to spend the rest of his life in prison. But that's a story for another day. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.